The Book of Mormon tells the story of families who journeyed to the Americas long ago. It mentions horses, which were said to be an integral part of their lives and culture. But scientists thought horses died out in the Americas thousands of years before these events were supposed to have taken place. The prevailing scientific consensus is that horses went extinct in North America around 10,000 years ago at the end of the last ice age. This has puzzled people for years. Scholars, historians, and scientists have debated the accuracy of these accounts, trying to reconcile the historical texts with the archeological evidence. Did these ancient people really have horses? If so, how did they come to possess them? Were there surviving populations of horses that we have yet to discover? Or is there another explanation? Could there be a misinterpretation of the text or perhaps a different animal that was mistaken for a horse? The mystery centers when horses lived in the Americas. The timeline of horse extinction and reintroduction is crucial to understanding this puzzle. Fossil evidence suggests horses went extinct there around 10,000 years ago. This extinction event is well documented through numerous fossil finds across the continent. Later, they were reintroduced by Europeans in the 16th century. The Spanish brought horses to the New World, which then spread rapidly among Native American tribes. The Book of Mormon time frame overlaps with this horseless period. This overlap has led to much speculation and debate among scholars and believers alike. This discrepancy raises fascinating questions about the text and our understanding of the past. Could there be undiscovered evidence that might bridge this gap? Or do we need to reconsider our interpretations of both the archeological record and the historical texts? Search for Answers continues as researchers from various fields collaborate to solve this historical puzzle. One theory revolves around language and how it evolves over time. The Book of Mormon was written in English, but describes events from a much earlier time, a time when languages were vastly different from what we know today. Could the word horse be a translation of a word with a broader meaning? Language is fluid and words often change their meanings or take on new ones as they are passed down through generations. Think of the word deer. In English, it refers to a specific animal. But in older languages, it might have been a general term for any four-legged animal. This shift in meaning is not uncommon. But in an older language, it might have been a general term for any four-legged animal. This concept can be applied to many words that have evolved over time. Perhaps horse in the Book of Mormon is like this, referring to a similar but distinct creature. It could be that the term horse was used to describe an animal that was familiar to the people of that time, but not necessarily the same as the modern horse we know today. This theory opens up a fascinating discussion about how we interpret ancient texts and the importance of understanding the context in which they were written. Language is a living entity, constantly evolving and adapting to the needs of its speakers. By examining the linguistic nuances and historical context, we can gain a deeper understanding of ancient civilizations and the way they perceive the world around them. So, could horse mean something else? It's a possibility worth exploring. Archaeology constantly unearths new information. Recent discoveries have challenged the traditional timeline of horses in the Americas. Some sites point to horse presence 
much later than previously thought. While these findings don't definitively prove the Book of Mormon account, they remind us that our knowledge of the past is always evolving. As we dig deeper, we may uncover more surprises. Many Native American cultures have stories about horses that predate European arrival. These tales often speak of horses as sacred animals, deeply woven into their history and beliefs. Could these stories be echoes of a time when horses roamed the Americas? Or are they symbolic tales passed down through generations? Exploring these traditions might offer valuable insights into the puzzle. Section five, the importance of an open mind. The question of horses in the Book of Mormon highlights the importance of approaching ancient texts and scientific evidence with an open mind. Our understanding of the past is constantly evolving as new discoveries come to light. It's crucial to avoid rigid interpretations. Instead, we should embrace the unknown and revise our understanding as new information emerges. Section six, the Book of Mormon and ancient evidence, a complex relationship. The Book of Mormon, like many ancient texts, presents unique challenges for historical and scientific analysis. It speaks of events and places often shrouded in the mists of time. Reconciling these accounts with archeological and scientific findings is an ongoing process. It requires careful consideration of the limitations of both the text and the available evidence. Section seven, seeking truth, scholarship and revelation. For those who view the Book of Mormon as scripture, understanding its historical context is part of a larger quest for truth. This quest often involves seeking insights from both scholarly research and personal revelation. Balancing these two sources of knowledge can be a delicate but rewarding endeavor. It allows us to approach the text with both intellectual curiosity and spiritual devotion. Section eight, the journey of discovery continues. The debate about horses in the Book of Mormon is just one example of the many mysteries surrounding ancient history. As we continue to explore the past, we are bound to encounter more questions than answers. This journey of discovery is what makes studying the past so fascinating. It reminds us that there is always more to learn and that our understanding of the world is constantly evolving. Section nine, conclusion, embracing the wonders of the past. In this chapter, we delve into the mysteries and marvels that ancient civilizations have left behind. These remnants of the past offer us a glimpse into the lives, cultures, and innovations of those who came before us. Whether or not Leahy's family encountered horses in the Americas remains a topic of debate. The presence or absence of these animals in historical records sparks curiosity and fuels ongoing research. Each discovery, no matter how small, adds a piece to the puzzle of shared history. But the real value of this discussion lies in the questions it raises about language, history, and our own willingness to embrace the unknown. These debates encourage us to think critically and to consider multiple viewpoints, enriching our understanding of the past. By approaching these questions with curiosity, respect for different perspectives, we can deepen our appreciation for the wonders of the past and the complexities of human history. This journey through time not only connects us to our ancestors, but also helps us to understand the present and shape the future. Embracing the wonders of the past is, in essence, embracing the journey of human discovery and the endless quest for knowledge. 
Thanks for joining me in this fascinating exploration of horses in the Book of Mormon. If you're interested in learning more about how ancient evidence connects with scripture, make sure to hit subscribe and stay tuned for more discussions like this. Let's continue learning together. And now you know why.